So a reflection on Advent. The beginning of the church's year, the start of it all. A time of anticipation, a time of waiting, but also a time of preparing. Imagine Jesus were to appear here today, walking through those doors right now. What would he see in the world around us? What would he see in us? And what would he say to us? Have we responded to his call of 2,000 years ago? And are we ready to meet him? Well, we may feel a little nervous at the thought of those questions. We may feel that the answer is, well, not really. If we look around at the world around us, if we look at our own lives, and we may feel we have failed hopelessly to fulfill our call. And we may be tempted to despair. But Advent is not about despair. It is about hope. It's also about renewing our confidence as we wait and reflect, as we recommit ourselves to be ready for the message of that gospel. That's one reason why the church's year is so important in all our lives, because every year our whole life is a journey of learning and the recycling, if you like, the reclaiming of that story, the renaming of that story is important in inserting in our lives and our souls that journey, that commitment, that growth, that renewal. The church's year begins not in a great fanfare, but reflectively challenging us to live, not just as if we are living for the future, but as if the future is with us now. Advent is about looking forward, yes, to the fulfilling of God's kingdom, but it is also about playing our part in initiating that kingdom which has already been inaugurated in Christ. He has made that kingdom present in the world and we are called to make that presence in our lives. In this sense, the Advent message is the heart of the gospel message. God has come amongst us in Christ already. His kingdom is not just a future hope. It has already come. And it's right here in your heart and in mine, in this place, and in the world around us, even if we do not discern it, or see it, or crucially respond to it. Jesus did not die in heaven, he died here on earth, and his kingdom is present, he lives, in every circumstance. Where there is love and reconciliation, the struggle for peace and justice, even amidst hatred and bigotry, amidst suffering and pain, there is Christ, there is the kingdom. For God is at work, even in the darkest places and even within the crosses that we all carry in our lives, at work and present, whether we know it or not, perhaps even whether we believe it or not, waiting for us to perceive him, to hear him, discern him, and respond to him. God calls us, therefore, not to despair. God is not in a distant, remote place and a distant, remote time, but right now, right here, or right here, right now. And if his kingdom is now, then we are called to be a kingdom people, following the way of Christ, living in his hope, and sharing that hope with the world around us. The prophet Jeremiah had no doubt that the kingdom would be fulfilled when God sent a Messiah, and that that kingdom would be one in which justice and righteousness prevailed. Note that these, above all things, are the mark of the kingdom, for they are a sign of the all-embracing love of God. 
in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, he makes clear to the Christian community in a cosmopolitan and multi-faith context that the work of the kingdom is rooted in the love that they show to one another. We heard that in the brief passage from Thessalonians that we heard. And for those around them. And Jesus reminds us in the gospel reading for today that we will be judged by the extent to which we have responded to God's call for justice and righteousness by the extent to the, by which we have been instruments of his kingdom. Are we ready to respond to this? Readiness requires patience, it requires work, and it requires time. That's why Advent is so important. And actually, of course, you know, now we sort of leap into Christmas. Now, Christmas sort of appears in mid-October, doesn't it? <laughs> and and uh, the Christmas carols are out, and, and there we are, and Christmas has appeared. It's actually very sad that Advent has been lost amidst it all, because Advent is so important in that preparation, that, that stepping back, that being ready, that preparing, that waiting. That responding to the kingdom requires patience, preparation, and time. And actually, just a little plug in, because the team, we're talking early next year, we will be doing some of that in this parish, reflecting on early next year as a parish in what our response to being the kingdom here in North Badsley is about. So watch out for that early next year. Am I all right in saying this, the, the team there? <laughs> okay. Um, a, a day, a day in early next year, haven't quite fixed a date yet, um, when, when everybody will be invited to be thinking about what we, as a benefice in North Badsley, Anfield and Chilworth, uh, how we respond to that call to be initiators of the Kingdom of God here, in you know, how we use what we're doing to be initiators of the Kingdom of God here in this benefice. Think of all the preparation and the cost that goes into the visit of a head of state, whether he's welcome or not, or into a wedding, or into a, a big party. I, I might have said years ago, actually it was a millennium, when I once, um, I once shocked my congregation by starting the sermon by saying, um, I'm really delighted to announce that in the millennium year, the Queen and Archbishop of Canterbury are visiting one parish in every diocese and our parish has been chosen. <laughs> and there was a sort of oh, a wonderful whisper, oh, gas in the congregation. And then I quickly had to say, I'm sorry, that's not true. <laughs> um, but I said, imagine the preparation that would go in if we knew the Queen and the Archbishop of Canterbury were going to come to this place. Months of preparation. And everything would be spotless. And how we would be dressed to the, you know, and everything would be absolute. Think of the preparation, or any major event, how we invest our time, our energy, our resources. Being ready for the kingdom, ready for the king, requires no less commitment. Think of that question at the beginning again. If Jesus walked through the door now, said, good and faithful servants, <laughs> how do we feel to that? Um, so it requires reflection on what we're about, who we are, and where we come from. And th that work involves us all. It's not just a matter of the ministry team or the vicar or whatever. For mission is something that is done by all God's people, not between individuals or clergy or the bishops or by projects. Mission, the work of the kingdom, is the task of the whole church community. And that is what Advent is partly all about a vital preparation in our hearts to receive Christ's call and, having responded, to be ready for Christ himself in every day of our lives throughout the church's year, whether it be Advent or Christmas or Epiphany or Easter or that long period of green, you know, the ordinary time, the ordinary events of our daily lives, every moment of our daily life. So whilst we consider that the world around us Remember that amidst all the darkness, and there is so much darkness and pain in the world around us, remember that there is light. That light shines in the faith 
in the goodness, in the spirit of Christ which is present in every situation and particularly in those people who have discovered the presence and the love of Christ and are showing it in those situations. And it shines in, in many ways, in, the, in many situations in each of our lives and here and all sorts of things that, that happen as well. But it shines also in every act of love and compassion that is shown amidst all struggle and pain and darkness in our lives and in the world around us. So we need not despair. Advent reminds us that the kingdom is here. Light. That's why this afternoon we have a candlelit service. Light shines amid, uh, amidst darkness. The light of Christ is coming, has come into the world. And we are called to be lights in that world. And I'm going to finish with a reflection um, which I will read from the, this book was published and must be I think I've probably had it 20 years have, uh, Vanessa have you seen Nick Fawcett yes and Nick Fawcett uh, actually several he's produced several books of reflections and he sort of he imagines the he imagines that he's John the Baptist or Mary or a disciple or a person in the biblical context and and he imagines a sort of monologue a dialogue of somebody reflecting on on a particular passage. And this particular reflection is, is, um, is imagining that's a first century Christian reflecting on the passage that we just read, on the Luke's passage, on um, when you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must happen. Nations will rise against nations and so forth. Um, and these will happen now, will happen soon. So here's an imaginary meditation of a first century Christian. He was wrong, wasn't he? Let's be honest about it. He made a promise which he wasn't able to keep. There have been wars and rumours of wars, chaos, confusion, unrest and upheaval, all the things he predicted. But a generation has come and a generation has gone with neither sight nor sound of his coming. We've seen nation rise against nation, famine, earthquake, flood, there's been persecution, sorrow, unsold suffering, brother betraying brother, families divided amongst themselves, just as he said it would be. In fact, there's only one thing missing, one piece left to complete the jigsaw, and that's him, the one it should all be about. So that's it, isn't it? The end of the story, the death of the dream, no point believing any longer. Unless maybe we've missed something. Misunderstood what he was trying to say. Is it possible? Is that why he spoke of heaven and earth passing away, but his words standing forever? Could it be that though the fulfilment is yet to come, the kingdom is here now, growing all around us, if only we have eyes to see it? Come to think of it, isn't that what he said? The kingdom of God is among you. In every act of love and deed of kindness, every word of witness and testimony to his saving grace, bit by bit it's taking shape. Another brick in the wall, another thread woven into the tapestry, each bringing the day of fulfillment a little closer. It may not be quite the time scale we imagined, nor the one he had in mind either. But if that causes us to doubt, maybe we're looking at the wrong thing, in the wrong place, at the wrong time. The signs are there, plain enough, just as he promised they would be. But don't despair. Don't lose hope. Springtime is upon us. The summer is near. So let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you prominent proclaimed the kingdom of God as a present reality. Forgive us for all too often seeing it solely as a future hope. You talk to serving you on earth. Forgive us for being more concerned with praising you in heaven. You spoke of meeting you in our daily lives here and now. 
Forgive us for focusing instead on our encounter in the life to come. Open our eyes to your presence around us, our ears to your call in the cry of those in need, our minds to the growth of your kingdom in all who work now to make known your love. Teach us, in all the pain and turmoil of our world, all its pain and suffering, to recognise the need of your coming again and your invitation to bring that day closer through our service. And help us finally to hold on to the conviction that you will come to finish what you have started, to draw all things to yourself and complete your new creation. In that faith we pray. Amen.